Let's drive it. Hey guys, welcome to the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show. We're going to be doing some really cool interviewing today. Uh, we're going to have Deborah and John Toms up. They're going to be chatting with us about art and everything art. I think I want a more funkier background. Ah. So they're going to be chatting with us about art and everything art. So want to get you guys um, kind of tuned in. But first of all, I wanted to kind of go through the website with you guys. Um, let you know some of the artists that we have here today. We have John Toms who has some really cool stuff. Want you guys to kind of check out what he has and uh, let you know the things that the new stuff that he has that you can purchase. We have these really cool, one of his really cool pieces, um, which is, let me move that up so you guys can see what we have. So you guys can have a look at it and see. We have this particular piece, which is awesome. This is one of his new pieces it's called part two. Um, the receiving, it's a 24 by 44. This wonderful piece is for sale here at the Media Blackness Fine Art Show. It is $2,500. So definitely you want to go and check that out on the Media Blackness Fine Art Show page uh, on the website. We also have some new work, um, Deborah Shedrick, but I'll have to show you those pieces because those pieces that she has here, they're actually here. Um, she created them at the actual show. We have some new work by Thomas Lockhart. And you guys know Thomas. He's always, always, always working. So come and check out some of his work, too. He has some really cool stuff going on at the show as well. So you can definitely check out Thomas Lockhart's page. We also have, um, well, let's see. Oh, we have a new artist. Um here, let's go back a little bit. And I'm going to show you guys one of our newer artists that's here with us. Thought I went back. Let's see if we can get, um, let me pull the page down. So you guys are looking at the half page that I'm looking at, right? All right, there is some more of John Tom's new work as well. And we have Miss Adelaide Grant Lord, who has some amazing work. Adelaide is a, she actually is, here, I'm going to go ahead and put my microphone on. I'm sorry. Let's get it. Okay, there we go. Miss Adelaide is a, she is an abstract artist. Her work is absolutely phenomenal. So you definitely want to check her out check out some of her pieces miss adelaide is actually out of boulder and so her work is amazing i'm sorry my mic seems to have fallen <laughs> fallen off and i'm trying to get it back on there we go you probably hear all this weird noise because i was trying to get my mic back on there we go so miss adelaide is actually out of boulder and she has some absolutely beautiful, beautiful pieces. Um, here's one of them, which is called Joy Embrace. And you probably have seen some of her pieces because they did have them. Um, those are some of the pieces that I've been posting. I just love Adelaide's work. She is actually a new addition to the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show. And we are so, so glad to have her work. She has... Um, she even has some other ones that you probably won't see here. Um, you won't see on the website because she brought in a new piece. It's actually one of my favorite ones. And when we go down there a little bit in that area, I will definitely let you guys see Adelaide, some of her other pieces that she has on the wall. You definitely want to kind of go and check those out. Um, she does some amazing, absolutely amazing work. The other person that we have, we actually have a new jeweler today. This time, um, her name is Angela. Her, is actually, her jewelry is beautiful. It's all um, stones and um, beautiful, beautiful stones. And uh, she talks about all of the healing properties of them. They're beautiful. Look at that, and just beautifully handcrafted, amazingly done. I 
And these are just some of her smaller pieces. She actually has some absolutely beautifully stunning pieces here that are uh, just more of a higher end quality, but just some absolutely amazing work. So we also have here, we have, um, this is Jasmine. Jasmine used to own, she was actually a owner of the um, Paint with a Twist, and she does some absolutely beautiful work. She, Jasmine was with us last year, but she, last year she didn't have a booth. Jasmine was um, one of the gallery artists last year, and now she, um, she actually has a booth this year. She's one of the booth had an artists this year. So just absolutely amazing work for you guys to see. Let's go to one of, another one of Jasmine's pieces. And yes, they all have prices. Um, the prices are just not on there. But when you go to the website, you'll see the prices on them. But these are absolutely amazing pieces of Jasmine's. Those are some of her older pieces from last year. But her new pieces from this year are absolutely amazing. So come by. And she also is one that has some pieces in her, um, in her booth that aren't on the site. So, and then as you guys know, the Beauty of Black and Fine Art Show, we do have our poster for this year, or this year's poster. And we also have our last year's posters are here as well. So you can purchase any of those posters. And we also have some other products. Um, we have these amazing cups. These are our poster cups. These are commemorative poster cups. It has all four of the posters, um, all four of the show posters on it. So you definitely want to go and check that out. And so we are going to head down so that we can talk to Deborah and, hold on. We're going to head down so we can talk to Deborah and John Toms because they are so exciting. But definitely go and check out the website. There's some amazing art on the website that you probably haven't seen. And, you know, so we do sell off our website. So definitely go and check it out. We have some quite a bit of new work on our website. And we have quite a bit of new products on our website. And if you want to be a part of our silent auction, like I said, our silent auction, um, the funds from our silent auction are going towards the Hattie McDaniels documentary. So definitely go and check out our website. Um, definitely check out our website and also um, definitely bid on some of our silent auction items. I'm going to walk you over to, ta-da, let's raise it up so you're not seeing my head cut off. So I'm going to bring you over here so you guys can say, okay, say hi to Anthony. There's Anthony and Kayla. So I'm going to walk you guys over here so that we can talk with Deborah and John Toms. Where's Miss Deborah? Let's see. John Toms is talking to somebody and Deborah is missing. I'll say, so Deborah is not here right now, so we're going to have to wait a little bit to see, see her. We're going to come over and look at some jewelry over here. Let's go look at some jewelry with Falani. Falani has some absolutely amazing jewelry for you guys to have a look at. So we're going to look at some of Falani's jewelry. Here we go. This is some of Falani's jewelry. And you can see he has some amazing pieces. Let's bring this one. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I got a bracelet on that one already. So we're going to put that on. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And these are all for purchase. So we'd love to have you on. These, some of these will be on the website. You can purchase some of these amazing pieces of jewelry from Falani. See what else? Wow. He has some wonderful belts. Look at that one. See that piece? Isn't that a beautiful piece? Look at that one. Oh, that's cute. That's the top. Look at that. Let's 
doing that. Let's see. And Kalani has some wonderful necklaces and other things. Here's another bracelet that we have. I'm going to put that on. Look at that. Kalani does some awesome, what I consider statement pieces. So he does some really nice statements. You guys know this is the last day of the show. This is the last day of the show. Look at this beautiful necklace here. Look at that. I just absolutely love that. Look at that. Oh. Isn't that a beautiful necklace? Wonderful, wonderful piece. Falani does such beautiful pieces. Absolutely. And let's go see. We're going to go and check out some of Angela's pieces, too. But I'm just going to slowly bring you guys over here to look at Kalani's pieces. These are all handmade, and he also does some custom, some custom-made pieces as well. It's also a bracelet. He has a nice selection of rings that are all here. Ooh, that's cool. Let's check out my ring. It's a really nice selection of rings. That thing is too big. Look at that. Ooh, that's one of those double rings. Look at that. <laughs> we'll see over here. But Falani does really nice, really nice rings. Look at that. Some nice silver rings as well. Look at those. What is that here? Okay. 
mean, well, I'll tell you it's all the Okay. <laughs> We can get you some nice stones. Look at those. Okay, those are some beautiful pieces. Falani does absolutely amazing jewelry. Absolutely amazing jewelry. I guess we'll have Deborah back in a few minutes. She went on a break. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're here. This is actually what we did here is we opened a little shop in the show so that some of the artists could sell some of their other products as opposed to selling products in their booth spaces. So this Actually, the Beauty Black Inspire show store. So I'm going to show you around our store and our shop. It's been pretty cool. So all the different artists have put things in. Sure. We're going to take you guys around to have a look at some of the items in our store. There we go. So, we'll look at some of the really cool items. As you can see, Thomas Lockhart has some really cool bags that he brought into the store. And then we have some other really cool, like, t-shirt items um, in our store. This is... Um, Clear as black has some really cool t-shirts. And then over here we have um, Miss Adelaide who has some really neat bags that she's created with elephants in Africa. Make great little bags for your um, son or daughter that uh, is going to school. They might need to put their pencils in something. That makes a great little bag for that. Great little bag for that. We also have over here, you can see our list of all the things that have been purchased. And then we definitely have our Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show um, shirt that we sell. We have another, you know, our other shirt. And then up here we have our Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show, all of our different cups that we sell, which is great. So definitely lots of things in our that we've done some selling from over here. We have a little bit of these Belt Studios artwork as well. We have some cards and things as well. And over there we have some other prints by Jasmine and some of the other artists. And then over this way, cute, let's go over this way. More things. We have some nice little sensory tubes by Ephala who put some sensory tubes in. And we have some of these other um, key rings and things like that for the show. More t-shirts from Ephala. We have some really nice prints from Thomas. And up above, we have 
some other items from Thomas. Thomas actually has some journals here. He sells for 25. He has some other little really interesting tote bags, which I thought was pretty neat. And then once again, over here, Miss Adelaide has some more things as well. And then up top, we have one of Thomas's really, really nice bags up top. He has a really neat bag up there. And then here we have some other shirts and things. These were all a part of our fashion show as well. So we got to sell quite a bit of things from our fashion show. So just some really, really cool sort of stuff that we have. Why are you hiding that over there, Arvetta? So just some really cool stuff. Huh? Really cool stuff that we have hanging out here at the Beauty of Black and Spine Art Show. So definitely, if you're out there and you're like, hey, I might want to come by and stop in at the Beauty of Black and Spine Art Show, do so. We're going to go ahead and see if Deborah has come back and she's ready to chat with you all. <laughs>
um, share with us, yeah, and share with us about yourself and your artwork, your beautiful work. Well, my name is Adderley Grant Lord. I live in Lafayette, Colorado. Um, I'm originated out of um, the Caribbean. I grew up in Princeton, New Jersey, about FIT, New York, Pittsburgh. Um, I study art in Pittsburgh. Um, I study visual art, illustration, um, marketing and kind of art. Um, I could do a newspaper ad in a second. I could do a layout. <laughs> yeah, so I study all, all things visual. Um, but I major in fashion illustration at one point. And that was my love. So I did um, New York City, 7th Avenue. I worked fast with Lorente. And then wow. um, I got married and moved around and had a child. And life happened. <laughs> and after life happened at a certain age, you kind of don't really give a who cool about anybody's opinion. Mm -hmm. And this is my way of like expressing myself fully with myself. I, um, I believe I came to a point where I believe who give a rat's ass what I feel, think, and understand, and what other people feel, think, and understand. So why not say exactly what I feel, think, and understood? So this was my expression of that. Um, so I went rogue from doing realism to abstract art, and I find myself um, painting what I feel. Um, I don't plan what I paint, I just go to the canvas with my color, and what comes to me, comes to me, comes from somewhere I say greater than myself, and there it is on canvas. So all for the world to see. Mm -hmm. And I say it's a wonderful thing to kind of um, see, see what I'm feeling on someone more. Mm -hmm. Like exactly what comes out of me, my full humanity, everything who I was intended to be, who God intended me to fully be, mm -hmm. express myself in canvas. So that's it. And most of my work is very joyful. I have very few pieces that are crossed between dark and light, mm -hmm. but most of it is within the light. I, I believe that we all have, we were born with an authentic, um, pure soul, pure light, and the universe kind of conditioned us to be jaded in every way possible, and I want to take my light back and put it on canvas and share it with the world, so this is it. It, it looks like, like, whenever I look at your pieces, it almost looks like they're going on a journey. There is, I feel like there's, like, this blue one feels um, like there's a pathway. Um, yeah. yeah. A lot of people tell me they notice there is a a doorway, almost like there is a doorway in all my artwork. Um, and I think it's seeking light. And that's what I've talked about. It's like there's a light within all of us. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to let it shine. We need to ring our own bell mm -hmm. and stop having people telling us how to be, what to do, you know, mm -hmm. what the condition we're supposed to be. I think we come into the world with an with, with an full intention mm -hmm. of who we were supposed to be and serve. And so, um, yeah, my um, kind of work out a bit of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I could go rogue and give you something very, um, very away from the corridor, like mm -hmm. I said, like a pathway right. to something like this that's very um, freestyle mm -hmm. and texture and a lot of, um, I go for, I go for a certain amount of feeling and like mm -hmm. my work, when I look at it, when I look back at it, it has to have some kind of emotional kind of feeling to me. Right. I have to connect to it before I say I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never finish something without me feeling Connect. high. Okay. The word is, I guess it's high. It's like an off floor. You just feel extremely happy. That, oh. You know, there's some things in life that make each one of us blissfully, like, glowing and happy. When I get to that place where I'm like, oh, I could dance. Oh, I'm feeling it. Like, you know, I'm feeling myself. Right. Like, where I'm feeling myself in the painting, where I'd be like, oh, I could keep that for myself. Then I'd be like, okay, I'm at the point where I'm in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, multiple, I think everyone on the but this one right now, I'm like, I got a thing for her. 
<laughs> I got That's a beautiful up. piece. Yeah. Um, and I, I was asked a question, me and you are doing a project at the Boulder Museum. Mm -hmm. And I was asked a question, what kind of ancestor want to be? And I think this was my answer to that question. Ah. Yeah. So and it was, what kind of ancestor do you want to be? I want to leave joy. Right. I want my generation of African American kids to say, that made me feel so mm. mighty. Right. That makes me feel so peaceful. Mm -hmm. So how many, like serenity on the other side, I want them to say, in all of this chaos, I can find, I find peace in what she does. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I like that. Yeah. So, I like that. Any other questions? No, I think so. Um, I've seen if Deborah, we're going to get them to sit down. Thank you, Adelaide. That, um, that really gave me a lot of, you know, I didn't know as much about your work. You know, cause, I mean, we we've, we've hung out and talked and chatted, but it's um, it's really nice to get a feel for your artistic vision, and because that's something that I didn't know about and some things that I didn't know about you, so it just makes the work even more vibrant. It makes the work even more way cool. So here we go. I'm gonna move Thank over because there's people uh, over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off you. You can chat with people. All right. So we're going to come right here. You want to do it over here? Okay, we'll turn some seats over. Okay, we're coming over here. We're going to talk with Devorah and John. Um, hold on. There we go. We're going to talk with Devorah and John. because And Devorah wants to hang out over here by John's work. That way, when somebody comes by... They can still get up and chat. They can still get up and chat. Talk, talk to, uh, talk to people. Okay. We're going to chat with the Laura and John Tom. Hey guys. We are going to be chatting with Deborah and John Toms right now. They're getting their getting their seats and their gear and all of that good stuff ready so that they can chat with you guys. So we're going to turn around. It's always fun to chat with these two. They always have so much to say and so much to do. I'm just going to bring it down because, you know, they're like old people, so they want to sit. <laughs> I got both of you. I got you both. Let me see. We want to see if I can get you guys a little closer together. You know, closer to Let's see. Are we Yeah. I'm shooting it. I'm shooting it past John. Yes, it is. There we go. We're just gonna put it, attach it to this. There we go. We're gonna, we're gonna bring them a little closer. They like they don't know each other. Hey, my name is There we go. So we got these two guys up here, and they're gonna be chatting with you. Uh, you know, how's the show? You know, but I'm gonna let you guys go and have a talk. And we will. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. So we've gone through the introduction. Yeah. Again. So we'll hear all... later. <laughs> yeah, we've done this, but someone didn't have the uh, sound on, so they couldn't hear us. And we're gonna try this again. Hopefully, I have just as much to ask because <laughs> I can't remember anything that I asked. So. I remember, but I'm not going to repeat it because I'm going to be 
you know, ask him this question. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, so we are at, what show are we at? The Beauty of Blackness Why Not Show. You guys should be at <laughs> And this is your second year here? Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. is. So can you tell me the difference of experience between the first show and the second show? Um, I saw one. Last year or this year? This year. Um, the energy is still good because the energy was great last year. It was, it was really cool to show with a bunch of sisters or change because you know how that is. It's, that's a rarity to you know, play out. Even if we're 10% of the total artists. Females, that's not, that's not so, um, for all the female artists, let's get out and represent. Yeah, I, and the thing too is, we have so many artists from out of town, okay. and that was super cool too. And you and you uh, see me from DC. I read from LA. So yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. It was super cool. And I like it. It, it was nice this year too. So Louise Cutler is the founder of this show and um, she's going to put all her energy to keep this show going every year. So invite, we're inviting you to our next one. Definitely. It's something that everyone needs to see and, and experience. Yeah. And so we're in Fort Collins and you live in Denver. How far yeah. is that? Denver is 64 miles. So it's far, but not that far. <laughs> yeah. Plan, plan your depending whole day. on the traffic. You know. Plan your whole day in Fort um, Collins and come to shoot, see the shoot. Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, I'm really looking forward to next year already. Um, because the year, I, you don't realize how fast the year went by. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, we were talking about the interview last year and what we were going to do this year. And then in between, it's like, you know, did the cruise. Oh, yeah. Um, not just the, not just the cruise, the Tom Joyner cruise. That, that was, so that shows that shows what kind of juice and and where your reputation is. It is because everybody just can't and get on that boat. Yeah. So yeah. the difference between your first show and this show, which is your present show, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you explain that difference? From my first show? Can you remember? Oh yeah. Uh, it was in 79, and I had 22 pieces in the show, and I sold 17. That was a good first show. Yeah, that's when I decided to where it was going to be a second show. <laughs> you know, but um, as time went on, good uh, little shows in here in Tavern. That and then I finally met uh, Keith Bowen, and he's the one that And his company's name is Golden Fine It was Golden Enterprises Golden when Enterprise. I when I was in. I don't know what it is now, but it was oh, Golden. Was, yeah, Golden is right. 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 So um, shout out to Keith Bowen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, Produced my first print. It was called the Sydney Sisters. That's how I did it. Well, that's crazy because he helped print my first print. So, you know, the jazz series, the spiritual piece of Sunday services, and uh, standing room. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then on top of that, with King, uh, King and I met John Scott, and he was uh, responsible for getting King Gabriel up. So, you know, it's funny how you're able to meet certain people and then they just elevate you to the next level. And then, you know, and all of a sudden they branch off and then they're doing big things, you know. So, and you know, back, back in the day, the children's surgery, that's a whole different ball game. Now. I don't know what those shows are like now, but we can't imagine how they like the world. Uh, can you explain chitlin circuit? The chitlin circuit is what we title, uh, well, us traveling artists title the chitlin circuit. So basically, the show that we were going to were uh, people of color. Yep. 95.9%. <laughs> it almost was people of color, which was a great thing. And then we were set up in the malls too, so then we also had the traffic. That was the thing, me being able to see the little kids come up, because they don't have access to it. You know, it'd be nice to try to get back to that, but the mall scene isn't really active anymore, is it? Well, it's I think because a, of online, the yeah, malls are being uh, Yeah, that, that's very true. <laughs> That's true. Right. Um, we're here for a conference in Yeah. Um, yeah. So we made a full circle. That's true. That's true. I wish I wish we could get this show down in Denver. It really needs to be down in Denver. Actually, this show needs to be in a whole lot. So you all have a place for us to live. Hang out with the art, the artist. Uh, email, you can get back to my show. She may or may not consider it. I'm just putting it out. And she's trying to grow the brand, which is nice. And it's important. Because, uh, especially, you know, I have a brand out. And it's important for me to see her to be feel and see experience and talk to other creative women. You know, I mean she needs to know the end of the possibilities. The fact she that, can reach me. Yeah, so the fact that she can actually talk to the creative is like you can you know, just walk up and have a conversation. And like, then see the work and experience the work and, and then the artist can tell you what went into what it takes to be that. Well, that's not really. Yeah, it, it, yeah it, you know, it's so impersonal. And kids, they're so. Their energy is so inquisitive, and, and they want to know. They, they're curious. They're, and and they have a natural love. That's actually that's the best critic there are. I prefer I love it when kids come in the room because they don't know nothing about not telling the truth. <laughs> and I always get a good gauge. Yeah, you know, and I get it. Personally, I get a good gauge on where I am creatively just by the reaction from the kids. But a lot of times they don't have to say anything. But you don't know, you know where their heads are, you know, and what they're thinking, which is a great thing. Yeah, which that's is a great connection. You know, which is what a lot of grown folks need to do as well. That's a whole different conversation. So let's talk about the connection between artists and collectors. For me, 
I never ask God to send me a cell or I ask God to make me the person that I be in this So uh, um, first off, it's kind of cool to not know, you know, like far as creating something that you're feeling, that you're vibing, and that, that you need to get out, and then realizing that it's someone that you don't even know that's out there that's waiting for you. And all of a sudden, it's there. You know what I'm saying? That, that's a spiritual thing. Yeah. You know, it's not about a color. It's not about a gender. It's it's, it's a spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and what you do is then you tap into individuals where they didn't even know they had it in you know, until they see your until they feel your work. And then uh, it's nice because, you know, I, I didn't even know face that. I do um, faces, but yeah, I Yeah, but, but yes, and see, that's the thing. The challenge with no faces, at least for me, is anybody put a smile on a face, you know, to show you what the mood is of the piece. But to feel that mood of your face. Feel the emotion of it is without a face, without a because if a person can feel that without looking at the face, so that's the connection, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And, and plus, it's a challenge for me, you know. And then, because now you have to rely on body language, you have to rely on the environment, the background, all that tells the story of what you're trying to get across, but um, client. And creating and, and you know for, for that client, you know, really all you can do is, is put your feel out there, and it's gonna find its own, you know, naturally, yeah. you know, in a natural order. When you bring a piece into a home, it'll find a place. It'll find, it'll it'll find its place. It's it's like, like, wow. it'll never, it'll never. There you, it, you know, <laughs> it, because we are where we're supposed to be. You know? I truly believe. And with that, with him putting me in a space where I'm supposed to be, and that means there's another entity involved for the most part, you know, that's just like me. I don't know if they exist, they don't know I exist, but when we figure out each other exists, then so. And how do to that was the piece of art? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, because I I don't I know my story is kind of crazy to say, but I don't want or need my art on everybody's walls because you know about that exclusive thing. You know, I, mean, I don't want everybody that I don't want to have something that everybody else has. It's like I I ask people all the time. So out of yourself and your babies, what do you have original in your life. That's a that's a nice big question. What do you have original, original in your life? From food, clothes, car, uh, everything. Everything that's in your life right now, wow. outside of you and your babies, what original things do you have? That's where is, we come in. Yeah, because everything is basically mass everything. produced. Uh, yeah, because when they get that piece, they're taking a piece of you. <laughs> and plus, it's all they want. Because I know you're like me in a sense to where somebody see a piece, you are somewhere else, and then they finally meet you and they go, I want you to do a piece like I saw. And then you'll look at it too much and say, well, I could do something, but it won't be that. Well, that goes into that group of you and your babies. It's original. It's only one. To say it's only one, it's a problem. Actually, it's more powerful than money because at that point, when you have a one of a kind thing, then that's where that money thing comes in. And put whatever price.
price you want or not sell it up, we have the power to do that. So, but the world now, man, is, you know, that's the thing to do is mass produce and to be like someone else. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it is, I, I love this show because what? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's seven sisters in the show. Uh, so yeah. And you know, that's our usual. That's really different. Well, I think we actually should have a stress. Show. I didn't hear that this year, but it must still have that. So we appreciate all the women that I'm Loving the work. I'm loving the work. I'm loving the energy. Um, but there has to be a way where we can get this type of vibe out there more than what it is. You know, not just here, but everywhere. It's like having life without music. Oh, I don't even want to think about that. It's part of our humanity. So, okay. So, let me ask you a question. Okay. So, what's what's your what's your next show, and would you do the cruise again? I would do the cruise again. My whole life, probably, my career probably changed after the cruise. Yeah. Now, the cruise I'm talking about is the Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage, where he puts on this art show on the cruise, and the funds, partial funds, are donated to students that attend black historical HBC. Um, historically black, black colleges and universities. So when I first did it, it was an eye opener to me. That, not overwhelming, <laughs> but <laughs> it was probably overwhelming, but I don't I see it as opening my eyes to what art can do for you. He has taken art. And he has opened doors for our children. And for me to know that I was a part of that, that I am the artist that was fit for that, um, this is praiseworthy. It's praiseworthy. So um, I, I just finished that in May. And I just came here. I didn't bring any work, I just painted on site. Um, some nice pieces in the back. Thank you. And what's next for me is to concentrate on my online presence. I've been putting it off long ago. This fourth quarter, 2023, I'm getting it done. So right. please look for me online. If you don't see me, call me out. Please and ask do. me where I am, okay? But, but, you know, I, I put it out there. That is my goal. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, it's funny because uh, we go way, 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 way back. I hadn't seen him in so long. Last year, when uh, my son was in the air, at the, in the parking lot, I was like, is that a joke? <laughs> I was like, crazy. <laughs> so I was so happy time. to see you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, went underground for a long minute. Yeah. But uh, thanks to Louise blowing the dust all the way, we're pretty getting me back out there now. Me that would be inspired by you guys. You guys were a great, like a great part of getting me back out there. Like I said, seeing you. Yeah, 
brought back great memories. Yeah. It brought back those memories of what we did to, to survive and to chase your dream. That was the thing, too, that I guess that was the turn on for me was to, to know how to notice how many people out there just really chasing that dream. And there's a lot of great art. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of great art. That's the thing that this generation is so different because everything is on the internet now. I see great stuff on the internet, but how much of it is real? And how much of it is them? Because you go to the internet now and see some cool copy of just as easy as So. That's the only thing I, you know, I, I'm having a hard time with. I'm, I'm loving the fact that the internet can get out there more, you know, and get that exposure and stuff like that. Yeah. That's cool. I think the best part of the internet for me is your clients here. Yes. They already know it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, and then they turn on other people on the You know, and it's not a lot of energy involved, but at least it would bring it would be a funnel to get into the yeah. yeah. I mean, because to see work on the internet is one thing, but to see a lot of totally different as a whole. Because my work doesn't really doesn't come to life until you're in front of Yeah, because when I look at it on the internet, it's not what I feel when I look at it. And then, you know, a lot of my stuff being dimensional. Yeah. The, photo, the, the photos can catch a lot of it. So you have to take more than one shot. You have to have two or three angles, you know, to let you know that stuff is coming off the canvas. So what part of your career did you transition from black to 3D? To 3D. It was, uh, how's it going? Good. 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 Uh, this started in 90, I say 92, uh, being in the lab and, uh, short on funds they wanted to create and didn't have a lot of material so i wanted to work you know sometimes we want to work on something so bad it's like animals and i just started looking around and i started seeing just stuff you know cardboard fast and the next thing I know, uh, my vision started capturing shapes. So after it started capturing shapes, then that's when it really became super easy. And it's all recycled material. So I was calling it whatever I could find around the house art. But now they call it green art, which is cool. You know, everything has more than one meaning to it. And you've been like that ever since. Yeah. But you can't go to a show and not and see another artist work since it's damn long. And I've been, you know, and that was the payoff. You know, that's, that's, uh, if you could tell us about Christ, which is, well, I understand why you charge what you charge. I'm flattered with that because then they can not really get the effort. You know, they think that, but what Christ people, when they see it, they go, oh, I could do that. I'm like, well, I'm sure you can after you see it exist. <laughs> It was good. It was, you did it. Yeah, it's not a clue in your head that 
what happens, my question is, is what happens when those one or two ideas run out that you have? And then you have to start looking for imagery on it just to stay in the game. I've been blessed though. My problem is I don't have enough time to it. Oh, uh, it must be time for the boss ladies. So, is there anything else? Any last words? No, we just sit for the next time because it's always great talking to you. We have too many experiences that we experience together. Works too hard for it not to be in this. And she loves it. And then it's a lot of great art because Thomas is probably what the bad. I'm sure, I'm sure she's been on the <laughs> But yeah, the art and then the new artists that are coming up. You know, just love it. And her song is released. I, I just love it. I, I'm, I'm glad I was asked to be a part of it. This time, the interview is like easy and uh, non stressful. Oh, yeah, this is not a stressful show. It's only stressful when you're sitting up the chair right now. <laughs> I decided not to do that this year. Well, you ain't trying to do that too much anymore. You're not talking about it. But it's part of the game. Yeah. People do want to see you sometimes. Yep. How are you? Good. You're creative. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you have to every day? Um, as much as I can. I'll spiral down. You know, it's uh, it's like it's just it's a part of it. It's like breathing. Yeah. Have to do something. Gotcha. Let's we'll see. Yeah, see, that's what we're talking. About, what we were just talking. About. So you got to do something. Right. We'll see. That's the artist. You know, well, no, but it's everybody. The artist grows by all that was created. See? Versus waking up and going, I want to do something, but I don't know what I want to do. And I should. But I'm an artist. We were just talking about how. I'm an ADD artist. Oh, I know I am. You are too. I don't know what that is. Oh, that I means know I don't finish things. I start a lot. Or I work on that. I work on that. Yeah, that's an artist. That's an artist. Yeah. I guess I'm like, yeah, well, I, I, I mean, mean, like, my sister, she'll work on one. And it's a lot. If it is, if it is something that will work on one piece, they'll do three or four studies before they even get to the place. Oh, yeah. You know, and me, I'm like, the moment it's in my head, right. I'm just yeah. trying to find out what it's going to go for. Don't have time to be, you know, it's a specific special function. I think that I love how you like make these instruments up. They're like cool. Yeah, that's a paper towel roll right there. So when you come into the lab, people go, put that in the trash and you know, leave it right where it is because it's going to be something. I don't know what it is. Yeah, right now, but it's going to be something later. Did you ever go to the Loveland Sculpture Show? No, never been. I'm Louise, the uh, founder of this show, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. Louise, right here. Uh huh. It's remarkable. It's great. It's a lot of cowboys and Indians and animal imagery yeah. and that kind Wildlife. of thing. Wildlife. And I tend to like more abstract art. 
there's some, yeah, but there's some, you know, there's, there's some great abstract parts too. But those guys, have this. But this is what I want to tell you. There's this one guy who took a giant piece of drum and he sculpted it into an instrument, like a violin, and then the bottom part of the violin would be the side of the Oh, and here she is. Hey guys, you guys all, I think they're all finished up. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you guys had a great, great.